project. It's an app called Celebrity Slots, uh, which allows fans to win experiences and prizes uh, related to their favorite celebrities, such as yourself. Um, so tell me a little bit about Celebrity Slots, what drew you to it, and how fans could possibly get the chance to interact with you if they download the app. Well, I was in the short, uh, so my, a guy that represents me in a lot of, uh, business dealings, Darren Prince, who also represents, you know, everybody from Carmen Lightfoot to Dennis Rodman, and uh, Dennis Zapp is actually involved in the project, and, um, from there I met the people that, um, I think developed, I gotta make sure I have the ownership of this correctly, developed the, the project, and then, uh, you know, here, here we are, uh, you know, I think close to a year later, we've uh, launched it in, in June, and uh, this is the first time I've had a chance to <clears throat> participate and uh, help market the not only them as a company, but myself uh, as part of the project. Um, you know, we're living in a un unique time right now, obviously, but you've still found a way to remain engaged with your fans uh, through everything. First, um, your styling and profile on auction on Fanatics, uh, and now obviously with Celebrity Slots. Um, what does it mean to you be able to continue interacting with your fans and continue bringing them joy uh, during an uncertain time? Oh gosh, it means the world to me. I mean, they, 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 um, they're the ones that, the, the, my fans are the ones that have given me the opportunity to be where I am right now, you know, talking to you, um, to be working with Lauren and Celebrity Slots, and, uh, I think sometimes, um, you know, people lose sight of that, that I haven't at all, but it, it became alarmingly 
mentioned uh, your ESPN 30 for 30, and somebody's going to have an opportunity to win uh, an autographed copy of that uh, as part of Celebrity Slots. And also you did some voiceover work uh, for Celebrity Slots. So what can uh, people who use the app kind of expect to, to see and hear out of you uh, when, when they download it? I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, you did some voiceover work uh, to uh, involve yourself in celebrity slots. So I was just wondering, um, you know, what uh, can people who download the app and use it, what can they expect to kind of see and hear? Uh, the, very best, the, the, the very best out. Good. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, you've been showing yeah, that. I can still go to Bravo. Well, Trust me. Oh, I know that. You've been showing it off uh, recently. I can sell Rick Flair. <laughs> Um, you've been appearing on Raw a lot recently uh, alongside Randy Orton, and you and Randy obviously have a lot of history uh, dating back to Evolution, uh, and you've often said that you consider him one of the best wrestlers in the business today and ever, uh, and I think most would agree right now that Randy's doing some of the best work he's ever done. So I was wondering, um, what do you think about the, his current run, and, and what's impressed you most about him lately? Well, it's... Uh it's kind of funny that Randy Orton, like, there's, there, are, there are five people that really stand out, and I'm not going to go on the list, they know how I feel about them, mm-hmm. but Randy is the, and I, and I, I can't think of a better expression, um, he just, he, he, he is,
mentioned Randy's promo. Oh, it's like a vivid port. What's, uh, what's that? No, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, yeah, he might not be as technically gifted as AJ, mm-hmm. who is the, like, <laughs> he amazes me. Yeah. You know, um, but if, if, if Randy can't, can't do it, it's just a bad side. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And he doesn't have to because he can take it. Yeah. Um, you mentioned... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you mentioned, um, Randy's promo work and how good that's been recently, and it's been, it's been dynamite, um, and he's been doing this, you know, without fans in attendance, and you've been cutting these excellent promos without fans in attendance as well, and obviously you and so many other performers over the course of their careers, you thrive on the energy of the fans, so for you, you know, what has it been like to, to perform without any fans in attendance, and, you know, what challenges has it created for you, and what have you liked or disliked about it? Um, let me think, the challenges, I, I think that the guys are, you know, I, I think it, the first week, or two weeks, maybe it threw them off a little bit, but mm. the guys and the girls are performing at a very high level. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the weigh-ins are not indicative of the level of performance, because I thought Monday Night Show was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And I said to myself, man, they're going to knock out, you know, the rating they're looking for. Uh, 
you know, you mentioned uh, your daughter Charlotte, and anyone who knows you or has seen you do interviews, they know how much of a proud father you are uh, when it comes to her incredible success in WWE so far. Um, she's back for a little bit uh, after undergoing a procedure, but how's she doing, it, and what do you think fans can expect out of her when she returns? Well, she's doing great. She, of course, is climbing the walls. Um, <laughs> I just got a text from her about a half hour ago, Dad, I'm going crazy. Um, uh, you know, she, she is so uh, intense and so in, uh, not invested, um, yeah, invested in, in, in our business, in the product, in her um, work ethic, I mean, this, this, this was, this surgery was something that, that had to take place, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I, personally, I, I wish she had died earlier, but she would never, ever leave without fulfilling what she felt she had to do, does that make sense? Yep. Mm-hmm. No matter, but, you know, th- 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 this was something that was bad, yeah. so, um, and I don't know, I don't want the headline to say it. Nobody, nobody made her say, nobody did anything. She, she is that, she's never going to ever be any less than 100% committed to the success of the company and her career and her involvement. And, uh, answer your question, she's doing great, but she's missing every second of it. Yeah. She does not know how to turn it off. Yeah. But that's what makes her all great she is. I mean, she can have the greatest match in the world. And she won't rest on that one roll for one second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's the sign of greatness, you know? It, 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 it's, um, because, uh, and it's a little bit like me and this, if you can learn something every day, yeah. If that's the mindset you have. Right. You can never stop learning. Mm-hmm. For me, it was the millions and millions or literally, literally, literally hundred, hundreds of opponents that I have wrestled. Yeah. Didn't learn something from all of them, but the, if you look at the great ones from Terry, Dory, Harley, Jack, Jerry, you know what I mean, Steamboat, Sting, Hunter, Sean, Taker, I mean, Brody, Hanson, I mean, I wrestled everybody, that's why my career is different, Bret Hart, um, Foley, I mean, there's nothing that it, you know, Edge in the ladder match, I mean, I actually had that, which was embarrassing, because Edge, you know, carried me the whole time, he said, what can you do to me, I said, nothing, I said, you can do anything you want to me, <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed that match. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's not because I did anything. <laughs> he did all the work. I just, I just took the bumps. Uh, I'm going to take a bumps, but I mean, I had no clue. He just carried me through it. So, you know, it's a testament to his greatness. But um, with her, man, this, this five foot, almost 11, 150 pound, uh, genetically superior woman that's just, man, I mean, she's the, she's the greatest. Yep. If she never wrestled again, she'd be the greatest of all time. Yeah, absolutely, she's something special. Yeah. Oh, oh my god, I mean, it, yeah. it, 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 it's, you know, I, I, I hate that we're arguable, I was just, I said it on the real. Come on, everybody answers, if that's, if that's a polite way of making everybody happy. <laughs> it ain't arguable. <laughs> You know? Yeah. You know, you know, you know when you get a, a grip on her is when you watch the opening of SmackDown or Raw, uh, mm-hmm. the heart open. Right. And she's doing that that corkscrew moonsault. Yep. At five eleven and a hundred and fifty plus pounds or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yep. <laughs> there's a reason that's that. There's a reason you remember that. Exactly. They don't remember me turning around in my pink robe. <laughs> Look at this one. That's a highlight. Yeah. She's a walking high. She's 
doesn't work in talking I let real. No doubt. And when she's not working and dresses immaculately, spends money, she she invests in her gimmick. Um, you know, and that she's not crazy like me. She's not <laughs> wasting her money on cars and shit like that. But when it comes to her appearance, and she's gonna look like a champion. And that's that's the end of the day. Yeah. You're a champion, she is a champion. Yeah. Um, you know, something I noticed in wrestling a lot lately, especially in WWE, uh, is it seems like stables and, and groups of wrestlers are starting to make a comeback. And obviously, you were part of two of the most successful ones ever, Four, Horsewom- uh, Four Horsemen and Evolution. Uh, and many fans consider the Horsemen to be the greatest stable ever. But for you personally, which stable did you enjoy being part of most? And what do you think is the greatest stable in wrestling history? Well, I enjoyed Evolution, make no doubt about it, but for me personally, because I was really good at that time, that you got to be the horseman. And uh, i tell you what makes the horseman a blood, no digger, and we never got marketed, we've got it, we've been around in this, in this age group and I had the marketing and the people behind us, PR wise, that is afforded to the kids today. There's no telling what we'd be, but um, what, what made us good is we're four guys that can work and talk. Yep. Four guys that can really work and really talk. Mm-hmm. You know, the, 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 the one's going to say that, uh, uh, you know, the, the, what I'm saying, Barry didn't talk a lot. But when he talked, it made sense. You know, when I talked, he said shit. He said science. And the only. Mm-hmm. All the way there. All the way there. There was a lot of people that were all over the team. But he was a lot. He was a lot. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I thought it was going to work in itself out because it did before. Oh. Oh, there you are. Here you Sorry, you, cut, you were cutting out a little bit. I mean, 
until it was on a Saturday, we were cool. Right. You know, that, that was the formula. We never won a match in five years. <laughs> <laughs> but all we did was go out and, and cut a guy off. And you didn't have to cut him off for 10 or 15 minutes to beat him up. Mm-hmm. Just got him down a little bit. The crowd was going crazy. And boy, we did it. Is it war games the same day? Right. We, we get up so mad, I remember it always a minute. I just go to, I think it was a rip to put a mic hawk at the end. Because my God, he came in with that, he was so crazy by the time he got in there. He closed my genius so I already broke his shoulder. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he almost killed me. <laughs> Everybody looked for a place to run when Mike got in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they, they were brutal and they were violent.
you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, when you called WWF in, in 1990, and, you know, as a fan of, uh, you know, one of my favorite times of your career was your early 90s run in WWF, you know, including your 1992 Royal Rumble win, uh, which still, to this day, is my favorite Royal Rumble. Um, how do you think things might have gone had you stayed in WWF rather than going back uh, to WCW in 1993? I've always been curious about that. Um, and also, were there any other times during your career that you considered going from WCW to WWF other than when you actually did? Yeah, I thought about going in 86. Hmm. Was SummerSlam in New York in 86? Uh, I, so I, I, think, I think the first SummerSlam was 88, and that would have been in New York. 88, yeah, I thought about going 88. Okay. Uh, to Russell Savage. Yeah. Um, that was proposed. Um, and, uh, I just said, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I know why, because I, I know what living in a room is sitting in a one house when I was talking to him. Mm-hmm. And, um, I just couldn't get myself to leave the horseman. Yeah. I just couldn't, and, you know, it was just never the same after that. I just, um, I was all like the horsemen and all that. Just, we had that phenomenal run. Yeah, we got back together and that, but when I left and came back, and then Aaron and I, we crossed paths, and no one was I was coming back, he was just leaving. And then, you know, it's, it's it, it does, I mean, it happens in life. Mm-hmm. Um, we all know that, but you know, you know, one of those perfect things, it was just phenomenal. We walked on along, we had so much fun together, we never looked at, never looked at going to work as work. Right. Never. Couldn't wait, wait to get there. Hmm. <laughs> yep. I mean, those 40, those 40 days, they would, we complained that, <laughs> when we were laying at the pool in uh, Vegas, the work that we, we did a satellite thing where we'd work, uh, I think this is the Great American Bash, mm-hmm. you know, 42 days, the last, we ended up in Vegas where we do, we parked the plane in Vegas, worked Vegas, going to Seattle, back to Vegas, going to Portland, back to Vegas, going to LA, back to Vegas, <laughs> going to Albuquerque, back to Vegas. Going to Frisco back to Vegas. <laughs> We're catch Kansas City going home. Oh my God. You know what? I get, I would give the guy a couple hundred bucks at the pool at the top of Kansas. I mean, there ain't more than God. <laughs> you know, the homeless, the chairs for us. Now we, we go to bed at five in the morning and up at eight. No, I said, um, what, what's your mess on that? Uh, you were, you were talking about, uh, being by the pool and having the chairs saved. Oh yeah, we got wake, we go back, we, we go to bed at 5 in the morning, get up at 8 o'clock, go to the gym and work out, lay in the sun to 4 and jump on the plane and go. Yeah. Not, life, not too shabby. <laughs> What's that? I said not too shabby, huh? <laughs> no, my God, it was so much fun, my God, I'm not kidding you. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask that one, but you know, um, I, I did want to ask yeah, you, it's marginal. <laughs> I did want to ask you one thing before I let you go though, um, and you mentioned so many of the, the, no, you're at the top. I'm fine. Go ahead. oh, well, you know, I just, I just wanted to ask you cause you, um, mentioned so many of the, the great wrestlers that you've worked with over the years and you've had countless great feuds and great matches uh you know dusty Rhodes, terry funk ricky steamboat randy savage thing the list goes on um but you know if, i know it's probably difficult to do but if you had to pick one guy uh that stands out to you as like your greatest opponent or your greatest foil in wrestling um you know who who would you pick Oh, God, my greatest, you know, that's so hard to do. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm going to have to say my greatest opponent when I was at my best. And they, these weren't great matches, but they were sold out. 
out every night. Mm-hmm. And, you know, considering we wrestled an hour a lot of times, which people will say, no, no way. Right. But it's, it, all the years and when I was at my prime, there will be death zeroes. Mm-hmm. You know, I can look at Terry Funk and all that, and I want to say, but I didn't, you know, Terry, I probably wrestled Terry, you know, a hundred times. I must have wrestled Dusty 1,500 times. Right. Sting 1,500 times. More than that. Mm-hmm. Steel, maybe. Who knows? 1,500 times. And when you, when you think of it, I wrestled Steamboat every day for a year. Yeah. That's just one year. Right. 1976. And I would I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, I just did. Yeah. You know, married to a guy. You know, like, I wrestled Jack Mulligan every day for a year. Yeah. Only did that angle back in the pocket. And then, where Terry Funk came and went, where <coughs> Holly came and went, I mean, all great opponents. I mean, literally, but without Dusty Rhodes and without Holly Race, and without, you know, I'm, I'm going to give these four people the shout out that they, that they deserve. Yeah, well, George Scott, is a booker, I'm just going to use wrestling as an example. Mm-hmm. Without Dusty Rhodes and Holly Race, there is, and Vince McMahon and Hunter, there is no Ric Flair. Right. I mean, I, I'm not throwing the bookers in, because I, George Scott would be the guy that gave me the break and helped me come up with the Nature Boy and Olivia Walker. So many components that go into the makeup of Ric Flair. Yes, I got, you know, yeah, I, took, I got the ball and ran with it, but people were good enough, but not enough to help me along the way. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to watch any of you over her. Um, yeah, anybody that doesn't think they get a little help along the way is in denial. Right. You know, um, I mean, you know, I've always told Charlotte, you can never have enough knowledge. That's, that's what really separates her. Her, she is driven to know more than her years. <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, her absolutely. She's been doing her for 20 years. Right. And, and, it, and it took her five. Mm-hmm. Five years to become the greatest of all time. Yeah. It's amazing. And there again, there, you, she doesn't have weakness. Because mm-hmm. there ain't nothing she can't do. Right. You want her to fly, she can fly. You want her to be technical? I mean, this is a good, I'll give you a great story. You're like, she said to me when she was found out she was Russ and Oscar mm-hmm. at Mania, right? Yep. I was there. Great match. She said to me, Dad, yeah, he, he stole the show. Yep. But she said to me, I don't know if she doesn't get mad at me for telling us, but she said that, God, she's so technically superior to me. How will I ever? I said, you will. Mm-hmm. You've got that gift. I did. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I, I'm not that technically gifted, am I? I said, yes, you are. Mm-hmm. And, and it's going to be there to I mean, the, the, the chemistry that she has with Oscar and Sasha is, the kind of chemistry I had with Steamboat. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to see Sasha and call it Steamboat. Yeah. There are I so know. many similarities. Oh my god, the chemistry with, with the only problem with uh, Sean and, uh, and uh, Sasha, they both want to be the, the heel. Right. <laughs> they both want to be bad. Yeah. They, they want, you know, so, but in terms of them in the ring, oh my god. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is some, I mean, you, you couldn't, you could take a couple of their matches, take a couple of the Oscar, uh, Sasha matches, I think, uh, but the, uh, the uh, Oscar Ashley matches, I mean, in, or Charlotte, I mean, you know, I've said this before, and nobody, I just want 
sure I'll just sting or call me. I call sting. You know, now I just, I, I don't feel like they, they will someday. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, I, I want them to feel like, and, and Becky and all that, right? I want them to, 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 you know, to have those relationships. You know, um, because time goes by. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, you know, not that they are of any, any kind of longevity issues like I have or been through what I've been through. Right. But, um, you know, I just, they, they brought so much joy to so many people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, social media and all that, it, they always want to make something out of nothing. And they're just, I mean, Oscar, Sasha the other night, classic. It was. You know, it's it just like the pay-per-view. Right. But then you people know, have to complain like, about what the finish is, and they have to complain about this and that, and, you know, they don't want to wait for the big that? match. And then people have to complain about what the finish is and complain about this and that without letting the story play out, you know, and just appreciate how great of a match it was. Yeah, I know. You know, hey, uh, I wasn't crazy about the finish either, mm-hmm. but I understand, I understand the business. Right. Just because of what's going on. Right. And, and there are a couple, there are a couple soldiers that are missing, you know, and I'm talking about front line soldiers. So, um, you know, in both divisions, and man, they're gonna, it was a hell of a show. Yeah. So, yeah, we're on the same page. Yeah. Um, but the, the queen is in a, in a special place, so I don't, it's not arguable, I won't accept that anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You come, you come by technical, and traffic in the air and everything else. I just she's there, but like like um like me with Steamboat or me with Sting or anybody else, you need someone to dance with. Right. And she's had Sasha and she's had Oscar and I mean yeah, and Becky. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, the evolution, when they said that the evolution they just celebrated last week, yeah. no shit. Yeah. But they didn't just, well, the, the, thing, the thing that I don't think gets enough attention is they didn't just evolve the women's division. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they put the boys on notice. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hello. Yep. Jesus. I mean, the women's no, matches are some of the things that I enjoy the uh, most now. The women's matches are some of the things I enjoy the most now uh, because of everyone you mentioned, you know? Hell yeah. yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I didn't walk up the door with seven minutes and ladies and gentlemen, and I was sitting in Gorilla when they decided to have a good <laughs> man, and I, was, and I don't care what anybody said. Having Stephanie do that part of the introduction made all the difference so long. Right. Because she, she, Stephanie McMahon, and whatever title she had at that time or that, she is recognizing them. Right. And I can see her mimicking uh, a strut with Charlotte and man. There you go. <laughs> um, that was it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, that you're, in contact with some of the people that you worked with, which is awesome to hear, and, uh, you know, you've mentioned uh, Vince also a lot, uh, and I was just kind of curious, you know, what's your relationship like with Vince? Like, do you talk to him often? Are you in contact a lot with him? Uh, he my text, he turns my text, how about that? <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I, I mean, like, if I need him, yeah, yeah. I am great, I can, yes. Mm-hmm. He has been there, Mike, uh, for me so many times. Jesus. Yeah. Boy, yeah. uh, he's had to remind me he's, um, to man up, act like a man, conduct myself. I mean, he just. <laughs> it's, it's to be so close to his age and to be so far behind. I mean, I'm much better now, but. Mm-hmm. To have been so irresponsible for so many years because I just was so wrapped up in being Ric Flair in the business mm-hmm. and wanted to be 
wasn't there. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons is that my oldest, my oldest one is from Minneapolis. But, you know, things were winding down a little bit with Ash and Reed. But, but really, it's funny because I was just, we're talking about one of the reasons that I got to be closer to Ash and Reed was Russell and, uh, and, uh, the lawsuit when I went home. Mm-hmm. For a year, I mean, I, I was, they were just really getting old and sports and all that, and I was a whole year, and then Russell buried me and sent me home for a couple of months, and isn't that funny, Russell buries me on, on, uh, the paper in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. He go on the desert, uh, and he goes, you must not like me, and I said, why is that? He said, because I don't get along with Joe Cornette. <laughs> That's, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Wow, well, what's that got to do with this? Right. Oh, this is going to be cool. You know, the funny thing is, mm-hmm. a week later, Terry Phone calls in sick. Uh-huh. And I need you in, in, in Memphis. And I said, guess what? You buried me. <laughs> yeah. It's like when I you know, wrestled Hogan to uh, Halloween Havoc, right? Mm-hmm. You're never going to go back for a year. This is Eric. You won't be back for a year. Oh, in Havoc, let me see, I think I was wrestling uh, in March against Vader. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or that was in February. You know, you know the paper you had to come back at, right? Um. So. It wasn't Starcade, was it? Up and came out of the crowd. Yeah. Huh? It wasn't Starcade, was it? No, it's where I got dressed up and came out of the crowd. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. my wrestling Vader was Starcade was, uh, when, uh, Sandy. Gotcha. Um, got disciplined, was in discipline, was in, was being disciplined. And I, I lived in Charlotte, and was in Charlotte, and just grabbed me. And, and that was actually cool, because that was, all my kids, and my mom and dad, who never got to see me wrestle, were all there for that, and that was cool. Yeah, well, that's great. But that wasn't the original plan, so, mm-hmm. I'm sorry that, and then you ended up going back uh, in 93 to WCW. Um, do you ever think about it? Do you ever think about what would have been different if you would have stayed? Do you ever have regrets about not staying? Or, you know, do you ever think about that and, like, what the difference might have been had you made a different decision? This was Vince McMahon. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, you know, Vince was a man he is. He said, I'm going to go young. Right. And, and, you know, he was talking like, Ten years ago, and he said, uh, "You know, I, 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 I was so, I was so happy. I was so happy that I didn't want to leave. But when I was flying out to WCW, and going to end up being robbed, and I thought, God, I'll go back.' And then as it worked out, um, 
I would say so. <laughs> Yeah, 
I'm the world champion, mm-hmm. you know that I'm making probably that, you know, anywhere between five as, as much as they are that night, right? Right. And I'm asking like, come on, come on, and they go, oh, it's no way. But they couldn't afford to go and drink it, so I paid for the bill. Right. I forgot to tell them that started. Yeah. You know, I was like, man, people agree with me. <laughs> comments you wanted to make or anything you wanted to say, you know, more, you're more than welcome. No, I just want to say, say I love the WWE, my daughter is the greatest of all time, and thank all my fans always for all the respect. Well, thanks so much, Rick, and I, you know, I just uh, wanted to say... I'll no, thank you, I'll thank you, I'm, I'm, I'm including you to Mike. Well, thank you. Thank it, you very much. Thank you, it, it honestly was an honor, you're one of, you know, my all-time favorites, one of the all-time greats, and uh, I've always... Kind of wanted to have the chance oh, to do this. Why not? The, 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 no, I'm not going to say arguably. I will say the inarguably <laughs> the greatest. Don't use the word arguably. <laughs> I, I've always wanted the opportunity to, to talk with you. I'm sure I'm the most entertaining interview, too. I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> I, I could do it forever. Hey, man, you take care, okay? Uh, you too, and uh, you know I, I look forward to seeing everything that you do uh, moving forward, including celebrity slots. So, but again, thank you for doing this. Oh, I appreciate thanks, it. Man. Thank you. Thanks.